Assalamu alaikum dear students. I welcome you all here at Allama Iqbal Open University Studios. The very interesting part about today is when I took my breakfast in the morning, I chose the topic for today. My mom was telling my nephew that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Articles were used in this phrase and I thought we should learn something about articles, a and the. This is all what I know about articles and I hope all of you also know only this bit. A and the are the articles. To know the details and every bit of it, we want our own, very own expert, Mr. Arshad Mahmood. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Arshad. Wa alaikum as -salam. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. I want to tell you the interesting part. I was just uh, sharing it with all the learners that when I took my breakfast, I chose the topic for today. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. There are articles in this phrase. So me and I hope all the learners, we want to know the details about the articles. Can we say the apple a day keeps our doctor away? No. Will it be wrong? No, no, it sounds different. Yes, good. Sound. Because sometimes you know the thing, but you can't explain. Hmm. So there are three articles, basically two articles in English, uh, but one of them uh, has got two different shapes, A and N. Right. The other is the. That is the biggest problem for us. So the, basically, there are two articles. I thought there are three, A no, and the. the. And is the form of A. Yes, and uh, the is separate. And has got some link with the vowels and all that. Exactly, with the sound. Okay. So A and N, uh, are they are usually called articles, or they as well. They are really demonstrative adjectives. They demonstrate like they pointed out at somebody or something. Mm -hmm. There are two articles in English language, as I've said, A, N or the. A or N is called the indefinite article because it leaves the person or the thing talked about indefinite. I mean, we don't know who the person is exactly. Mm -hmm. In other words, it does not make something or somebody specific or definite. For example, if I say a book, it may be. A any novel book. or any book. Any book, you're right. If I say a city. Any city. I visited a city, it might be. You never know which city you visited. Yes, yes, it can be any city. The is called the definite article because it points out some particular person or thing. Where is the book? The book. the book I am talking about. Yes, and you know which book I am talking about. Mm -hmm. It means when uh, the speaker and the learner, they share, they have the shared knowledge, then the is used. Right. The book means, you know which book I am talking about. Right. So here the book is a particular book and both the speaker and the listener know which book is being referred to. Now we will discuss these articles in detail. First, A or N. Mm -hmm. The choice between A or N is determined by the sound. Right. Sound of what? Sound of the next word. Right. Uh, before a word beginning with a vowel sound, an is used. You've got many examples. An orange. An apple. An apple. An apple a day. Uh, an egg. An hour. An hour. It is not an in An hour. H is not a... In spellings, it's starting with H. But there the is sound a constant is... Sound right. is because it uh, depends on now the sound. Now I understand the definition that it depends, it is determined by the sound. By the sound, not the letter. Right. Power is a word and similarly honesty or honest. Honesty. For example, I cannot say he is, uh, uh, he honest. is uh, uh, honest or uh, honest, some people say even <laughs> honest. So he is an honest because her sound is silent there. Right. Uh, some more examples, an air. Can you spell the word air? An air? Air. Like I said, an honest man, an orange, an air. I don't know how to spell it because I don't know what you are pronouncing it. Uh, air? H-E-I-R. H-E-I-R. I seriously don't know. Mm, air, like, uh, you know the word we say? Varis? Right, 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 right. Like air to his father's property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Varis. Mm -hmm. An umbrella. 
No, umbrella. And umbrella is a word that starts with U, which might behave in two different ways. U might behave as a consonant, for example, in European. Mm -hmm. I cannot say an European. Right. Say a, a European. European man. Right. If a word is beginning with a consonant sound, we use A before it. For example, a boy, a pen, a useful tool, a university. Remember, I gave you the example of umbrella where U is being used as a vowel sound. But here in this word, U is giving the sound of a consonant sound. That's why we are using A, not an. And uh, of course, what I said, a European style. In the similar fashion, we say a one rupee note or a one eyed man. We cannot say an one eyed man because one is a word that although is beginning with O, but here it is giving us wa, that is a consonant sound. Some words begin with H, but this H is not stressed. In such cases, we often see that the native speakers drop it and use an before the word instead of A. I think quite interesting for you. For example, an historical novel, an hotel, etc. I'm not saying that you can't say a hotel or a historical novel, but I'm saying native speakers, they might say an hotel or an historical novel because I think in these words, H is not important and the stress goes to like in its historical second part that is to, historical. And in, in hotel, that is being pronounced here as hotel, stress is on the second part. So in such cases, which are not many, they use an, not a. But even if you use a, that won't be uh, wrong. Now we'll discuss definite article the. That I think is a big problem. And the reason is that we don't have this thing in our language. We don't use the. We don't have any other form of the in our language. And I've observed that we don't use this in, in, in our regional languages. None of the languages uses this sort of uh, idea. That is why when we start learning English language, we face some problems in using the. Sometimes we don't use where it should be used. Sometimes we simply use, overuse it. So this is a big problem. So when we speak of a particular person or thing, or one already referred to, uh, we can, uh, we should use the. For example, the student you are talking about is the best athlete of our school. So here the student, we're focusing on a particular person. It might be Khalid, Ali, Tipu. But we know we don't need to talk uh, about, we don't need to call him by name because the refers to that person. Second example, I didn't like the match. And if I'm telling you this thing, you know which match we're discussing. He didn't bring the cassette I wanted, the cassette. Not ca you cannot say he didn't bring cassette I wanted, the cassette. And sometimes we use uh, the when a singular is meant to represent a whole class. For example, the dog is a loyal animal. So when I say the dog, it means all the dogs in the world. So this dog that is being shown with the help of the is representing or standing for the whole class, the whole species of uh, dogs. The cat loves places, not people. And then we've got the bunion is a kind of fig tree. Here some of you might ask the question as to what is the difference between the and the, I mean, which one is right? I would say both of them are right, but the difference is uh, that the is used before a word that begins with a consonant sound. And the is used before a word that begins with a vowel sound. For example, I would say the apple. If I say the apple, that is not wrong, but native speakers will not say the like before a consonant or uh, the before a vowel sound. Some more examples, the boy, not the boy, and the orange, not the orange. Sometimes we use it for the sake of em emphasis. I remember on PTV there used to be an ad and where, the, where the man used to say, it's the paint. Here, not the paint, the is being used because he wants to give it some sort of uh, uh, speciality, just uh, some sort of importance and just to claim that this is the best paint in the world. That's why the paint. But note that the two nouns, we're talking about the class, like the dog, the cat, but man and woman, they don't take the. For example, I'll say the man is mortal. If I say this, that is wrong. So the sentence is man is mortal and woman is man's mate. Uh, after this, we also use uh, this before newspapers, magazines, and holy books. The nation, the jung, newspapers, the time magazine, the Quran, and the Bible. So we use the before these books, important books, and newspapers, and magazines. We also use the before mountain ranges. 
for example, the Himalayas, the Alps, and the Karakoram. But we don't use it with single mountain peaks. For example, if you say the K2, you'll be wrong. Or the Mount Everest, that is wrong. It would be K2 and not the K2. I'll give you some examples of mountain ranges and um, uh, single mountain. For example, the Karakoram is situated between Pakistan, Tibet, and India. And K2 is the second highest peak in the world. And Mount Everest is the highest peak in the world. I hope you're getting my point. Then we'll move to the next point. We also use the before things that are unique of their kind. For example, the sun, the moon, the Jupiter, the earth, etc. But we never say the God. Though we can say the God of rain, but that God would be small g. When we talk about God, the one we believe in, we always write with capital G. And for that God, we don't use the because that is the only God. Although we use the before unique things, here God is an exception, but God with small g definitely takes the. Because if we look at history, the Romans, the Greek, and the Indians today, they have got different gods. For example, the god of rain, the god of sun, the god of glory, the god of victory. For example, Nike, what people usually pronounce Nike. Nike was a goddess of victory in ancient time. Uh, it was uh, a belief of the ancient Greeks that Nike was a sort of symbol of victory and whenever they went for a war they put the statue of Nike on a cart before the armed forces and then they would go for the war and they thought that it was some sort of good omen for them and because of her statue they would win the war that's why today uh, there's a company that is called Nike that makes shoes and, and shirts and these sort of sport things but the word is wrongly mispronounced that is uh, Nike it should be Nike so we say Nike we don't say Nike and what about Adidas? Uh, like Nike, you're right. If we refer to Nike as a sports company, we, we don't use the, but we refer to Nike. The goddess. Goddess, then we say the Nike. Uh, no, not the Nike, we say the goddess of, the goddess of victory. Okay. But Nike will not take the before, the before because it. that's a proper noun. Okay. Adidas is just like a company. Uh, people say, what does Adidas stand for? Any idea? People usually think it's for all day, I dream. About sports? I have no idea what does Adidas <laughs> I'm not sure, stand but for. But this is what people say. Adidas means all day sports, uh, all day dream about sports. Okay, that's uh, interesting. Yes, we also use the before seas, rivers, deserts, and oceans. Mm -hmm. For example, the Indus. We can say Indus flows through Pakistan, the Indus, and the Pacific, the Sahara. Sahara, the Sahara, I think, is the, the Sahara is the, the vastest, the biggest desert, desert. in the world. Mm -hmm. The Mediterranean. We also use the before nations to differentiate them from the language of that nation. For example, the British, the English, the English, the German. When I say the English, it means I'm referring to the people. I don't need to say the, the English people. Okay. Uh, the I'll, English I'll, say I'll that. make two sentences. I like German, mm -hmm. but I hate the German. I don't hate, what? but I'm telling this for the sake of giving the difference, the German. The German is for the language. Nation, the people. Okay. And German means the language. The language. For German. example, English is a very difficult language and the English always follow rules. Okay. The, the English, English means people. people. Okay. So when I say the, we, we mean the people, the people and we simply drop the means language. But we can't do this thing to Urdu language because for Urdu we've got, Urdu is only language, people are not called Urdu or Pakistani means people, Pakistani doesn't mean language. language. So here Urdu doesn't take the, people don't take the okay. Pakistanis. Okay. It is used for the nations or for countries where the name of the language and the people is same. The Spanish means people, the German means people, but Russian means language. That's okay. the idea. Okay. And uh, in the same way, we use bef uh, the before the country's names if their name is in abbreviated form or if the full name is used. In other words, I cannot say the Pakistan, mm -hmm. but if I say Islamic Republic of Pakistan, I must use the. The. Yeah. People's Republic of China is wrong. The, the People's, People's Republic, Republic of China. China. Or if the country's name is in uh, abbreviated form, for example, uh, the USA, the UK. The UAE, the KSA. We say the USA, but when yes. we say United States of America, then no, we don't. Even then, we say the. 
the United but, States. But when America, we say America, then we don't use yes. any article. The, uh, the KSA, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But when you say Saudi, then simply Just that Saudi. is without the. Okay. But we uh, like uh, we don't use uh, the before the names of people. Places, villages, towns. Place includes so many things. So we can't say the, the Mr. Arshad is teaching us about articles. <laughs> if you say this, we may have learned something <laughs> wrongly. Okay, and uh, like place includes villages, towns, cities. We can't say the Lahore. Hmm. We can't say let's say the, the, the I am the, from the Rawalpindi. Yes, <laughs> I'm from Pindi. Because why? The name is already referring to something. If I say Pindi, it means it is already specific, mm -hmm. and the is used to make somebody something specific. specific. So it, when something is already specific, no need to use the. Mm -hmm. The is also used before superlatives. Superlatives, you know, uh, adjective in English has got three degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the third degree of adjective. Yes, yes, positive. And comparative and superlative. superlative. Just like verb has got three forms: present, past, past participle. So adjectives have got three different forms: uh, positive, that is used like for, for example, he's a good boy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we talk about comparison, we use second he's form: he's better than, than some other than. Word. And then best he's for the best, best among all. Use, yeah. Then here, one more confusion is that people often pronounce the superlative form uh, with st as est. For example, biggest, mm -hmm. tallest, fastest. That is wrong. It should be ist. Okay. In spelling, it is est. In but pronunciation. In spoken, yes, learners, I hope you're learning. Est should be pronounced as ist. ist. For example, biggest, tallest, hardest, fastest, longest. Got the idea? Mm -hmm. But best, best remains best. It doesn't change into. Now these days we best. use slangs like she's my bestest friend. Mm, bestest. That is totally a slang word. That is not a part of the original language. Sure. So uh, sometimes people like they say uh, he is the the most uh, kindest mm. sort of thing. You see again repeating. The kind you're the kindest person I ever met. Exactly. And then uh, some adjectives don't take uh, like uh, they don't take this form. They simply take more or most. Okay. For example, f uh, f uh, fast. Faster, fastest, big, bigger, biggest, but uh, horrible, more horrible, and most, most horrible. horrible. Interesting, more interesting, most interesting. Why? Beautiful. Because big, fat, these words have got only one part. What about if you say beautiful, beautiful, more, more beautiful? More yes. Beautiful. It means a word which has got more than one part, it takes more and most. Mm -hmm. A word which has got only one part, one syllable, technically speaking, right. that takes E R or E S T. Okay. I hope that is clear to you. Keep on noting it for yourself. So, the is also used before, as I said, superlatives. For example, the best poet, the fastest man on the planet. Who is he? The fastest man on planet? In uh, last Olympic Games, he won so many gold medals. Our own Pakistani? No, he was from Jamaica. I okay. think Hussein Bolt. Okay. And uh, I didn't know that. By the way, my general knowledge is so poor. Please. <laughs> right. The most hardworking boy in the whole class. Here, hardworking, I'm not using like EST because hardworking is a word that has got three syllables hard, one, work, two, ing, three. So it will take more or most. So we're using most and the because it's superlative form. Okay. Before the ordinals, the first man to reach, we cannot say first man to reach, these are the ordinals, and the last prophet. Mm -hmm. We cannot say last prophet, these ordinals. Okay. Sometimes we say uh, the poor or the rich or the injured to refer to each person who is poor, each person who is injured or rich. For example, the poor in Pakistan are in big trouble. Mm -hmm. The poor means all the poor. Every poor. Every poor man in mm. Pakistan. Or the, uh, the injured were taken to the hospital means everybody who was mm -hmm. who was injured when we when we used the before poor that is the used before the whole poor community like a uh, bunch of it yes not all for of a them. single person or we can say uh, poor people mm -hmm. the poor or poor people okay. so here we're using the for the sake of uh, let's say making something more precise all right. instead of saying poor people all the right. poor so this uh, this is quite technical, but I think if people uh, learn some other languages like German or French, they will find it even more more, more difficult. difficult because in in for example in in German, they use article, uh, different article before 
something that is masculine, mm -hmm. what we call muzakkar, something that is uh, feminine that takes a different article, and then for plural, they use different article, and for, let's say, something that is neutral, they use a different article. So German, French language, these languages are very, uh, I would say, the more difficult than English in terms of article and grammar. Mm -hmm. So English may be difficult, people commit mistakes, but it is not that easy. Yeah, it is, it is easy, I think. Mm -hmm. And once I was teaching a boy, he had already done masters in German, mm -hmm. German language. Uh, when I gave him some sentences uh, to change from uh, from active to passive, right. he said, I think English is the easiest language in the world. He was right and thank God English is the universal language. If German or Chinese or any other language was a universal language, we, we should have failed Definitely. totally. I would have failed completely. And there are people who, who feel this thing, for example, in, 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 in English society, there were kids who were forced to to learn Latin and Greek, Latin rules, all the cases mm. like nominative and ablative and vocative. And, Every and other language as subject. compared to, the, we don't find our own language as difficult, but any other language, if you look at it, um, English is the most easiest as compared to any other language. Most easiest. Most easiest. <laughs> English is the <laughs> we easiest. We are learning. <laughs> the easiest language. And you see, if like if you look at Urdu language, we don't have this article, but still our communication never fails. And sometimes I feel, what's the point of using this article in English even? If I say Mediterranean, if I say, for example, Sahara, or if I say, if I say Himalayas, there's only one Himalayas. Mm. Why do they use the? I mean, the Himalayas, why not Himalayas? If I say Himalayas is one of the famous... Just to emphasize. But again, why emphasize Himalayas? I don't know. I mean, there's no logic. Ambiguity. I, I, I feel sometimes that even if we don't use the communication is still there. Hmm. Message is conveyed, but according to rules, we yeah. have to use the. We have to follow the rules. Loopholes yes. are always there, but we have to follow the rules in the and end. English is a language where they say there is only one rule, that there is no rule. There is no rule. Because Seriously. if you look at past forms, for example, if you say uh, uh, to change a uh, verb into past form, we use D or ED. Mm -hmm. And you give so many examples for the watch, watched and uh, play played, smile mm -hmm. smiled, Hear, but go, went, gone, gone, catch, caught, caught, spin, spun, spun. Similarly, we say we add ER or EST before uh, uh, adjectives, but the very next moment we add more or most. Oh, yes. So English is the language where we don't have many uh, rules. Like we say, when we compare two things, for example, two adjectives, he is taller than me, mm -hmm. and he is more hardworking than me, me. Ali is uh, cleverer than Usman. You but said cleverer? Cleverer. Okay. And the next moment we say, he is superior to, not then. Any other person, yeah. Not then. Superior to, inferior to, junior to. Mm. So that's why we say English doesn't have any rules. But these rules have to be learned if you really want to pass um, your exams and if you want to score high Or you really want marks. to learn English. Yes. And because English has become national, international language. It is called lingua franca, global lingua franca. If you have a friend, friend from some other country, uh, the language of uh, communication is going to be English. Uh, or the other option is that you learn the language of that person or he learns your language. That is quite difficult. So the option left, only option left is English language. And I would like to add something. If we call on any, any helpline, any helpline, we, uh, we hear a IVR, you know. English mein malumat ke liye do dubaiye, Urdu ki malumat ke liye. I don't know, everybody, everybody, including me, we do have a fear. We go for the Urdu ki malumat ke liye ek dubaiye. We never go to the English details. Why? Because we are hesitant. Yes. We, we hesitate. We, we do hesitate. Exactly. We, we feel that we may not be able to get the information in the yeah, right way. In the right we way. Fumble. Or maybe we should miss some things or we should go for the Urdu that is easier. So, dear learners, if you really want to learn these rules, the best way for you is to buy any good grammar book or you're seeking help from this program as well. Uh, it, I hope it is going to help you a lot. But for further details, you can, I can mention a few, few books. Uh, one is by Ren and Martin, that is High School English Grammar. The other is uh, by Thomas Thompson and Martinet. These, there are many grammar books available in the market. Uh, because there are some, uh, some slight shades of the and different rules are there. If you want to learn these things in detail from examination point of view, because in exam, you cannot afford to commit a mistake, you will simply rules mar uh, lose marks. 
So for that, I think you should uh, consult good book and I hope the book is going to give you a lot. Uh, talking about books, if you really want to see something that is easy, that is easy, reader friendly, that is written in easy English, that is the book that is being given to you by the Alam Iqbal Open University. That book explains these rules in very easy and language and I think interesting yeah, with pictures as well. So I think that book is very useful for you people. Thank you, Mr. Arshad. We learn a lot from Mr. Arshad. We really do. This is all from Allama Iqbal Open University Studios. I hope you enjoyed the topic. And inshallah, we'll bring another interesting topic. Take care of yourself. Enjoy yourself. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.